Steven. Yo. You missed Cannonball. I know I'm a little upset about that. You were busy. Yeah. He, he was there. Oh, he was on your shirt. I know. <laughs> I know he was on As your shirt. Todd sent me like 50 Snapchats <laughs> about it. But something else happened. Uh, we're picking the winners of prizes. Yes. Oh, wait. Hold on. We're picking winners. Hold on. For the for the the prizes to give away the printer and all this other bunch of stuff. Okay. The first name that they pick out says Todd Wolf. <laughs> but he didn't put a phone number. He didn't put any <laughs> other contact information. It just said Todd Wolf. What are the odds? Oh, did you, I bet you put more than one in, didn't you? No. One. Really? Just one? No. I, I went up to the counter to sign my my camera in to That's get it. That's so uh, funny. You got to get clean. it checked or whatever. Did you get your lens clean, by the way. So this fixed? is what he won. I didn't do that. He won himself an Allen's camera t-shirt. Looks retro. I'm going to wear that. I'm going to wear that on vacation. Nice. And, and the lady says to me, here, did you fill out um, a thing for the for the uh, raffle? I was like, ah, I probably shouldn't. I was like, I'm here with Jared. <laughs> kind of a She's part like, oh, of no, the whole thing. Just go ahead. Just fill it out. I was like, all right, I'll fill it. I just put my name down. I was like, they're not going to pick me. I was like, but it'd be hilarious if they did. Oh. <laughs> anyway, let me do the intro. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. Welcome to Raw Talk number 187 on a... Tuesday. On a Can Tuesday. I do the lyrics? I was gonna do the lyrics. What? One eight seven on a undercover cop. Oh, is that what he says? Yeah. Oh, I thought he cursed or something. No. <laughs> so anyway, it was good. Cannonball was really a lot of fun. Big thanks to Allen's and Cannon for putting that on. Heidi Thank was you. there. Heidi was there. <laughs> Somebody was sitting next to Todd, uh, next to Heidi at the t- after eating tacos, and he goes, "Wait, yo, Heidi." You sound nothing like what Todd makes you sound like. <laughs> That's because he's an asshole. <laughs> Everyone Todd impersonates them. Nothing like that. So how was Firefly? Firefly was a good time. I mean, five days of not showering and camping was a little rough, but <gasps> it What happened out. to the showers? They have showers, but you're at a festival, dude. So you did not shower? I showered the first day, and that's it. What about your girlfriend? Did she shower? She showered, yeah. Thank God. A lot of the girls did. <laughs> Together? No. They don't shower together? Now you have either like the solar showers that you can bring with you and you just have a five gallon bag that like heats up in the sun and there's just, just like a little nozzle on it. Or you can actually go to the $5 uh, paid rent a shower showers that you can actually Did pay for. Did you do for like wet wipes in. or anything? Or like... Yeah, you bring wet wipes. Oh. Baby wipes and just kind of do a little ghetto shower. Because I'd wipe. have bat wings the whole time <laughs> if, I, if I didn't at least wipe myself down every once in a while. But it, it, was, it was a good time. I mean, the, the bands were great. Mumford & Sons, Group Love, Death Cab for Cutie, Blink-182. A lot more. Earth, Earth, Earth Wind and Fire. Yeah, they were there. Do you remember? No, I don't. But it was fun. It's good to be back, though. On and on, rhythm is... Is that what they sing? Yeah, they, that is one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Just yeah. checking. I'm good. so glad you're back, because when you're not around, Jared has nobody else to call but <laughs> me. <laughs> well, Steven's been editing for like a month straight. So I had a lot of quality Because we've had nonstop time. back-to-back real-world reviews that I've been editing. I and then I days at La Cologne with Jared. Yeah. Days at La Cologne. So what happened at La Cologne, Todd? Uh, well, I thought it was going to be a really constructive business meeting, and then Noah shows up and ruins everything. So I offered to buy Noah a coffee, and we went to get a coffee, and then Noah bought me a coffee. And I said, Ooh, oh, thanks, hey. Noah. Noah says, thanks, Dad. <laughs> and the girl says... Oh, is this your dad? <laughs> and I was like, no. Oh, that's and awesome. she totally was like, oh, you guys really do look alike. And I was like, I, I was I gonna, will... you're going to probably have to beep this. I was going to be like, bitch, if you don't shut the fuck up, I will smack <laughs> I will smack your <laughs> braces out of your face. She's like, oh, my God, you guys really do look like each other. I'm surprised she didn't think you were like a young hipster with those fresh glasses. Yeah, just I, got. I was wearing these glasses. Look, look, look at Todd, them. Yeah. bend your head up and down a little bit so people can see can see the grooves oh on your freaking hipster so glasses. Oh, my God. At least I don't make you look like you got purple <laughs> mascara this time. No, they're anti-reflective. Because I told the lady, I was like, yeah, for these cool glasses, I need them to be, uh, be able to reflect light because I'm on camera sometimes. <laughs> She said, oh, what do you do? I said, a bullshit internet show. So that's all. <laughs> the ones last week, though, they reflected so much. Those are my purple rain yeah, ones. Those are fun. the ones I, I, I wear for uh, uh, editing. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, next week I'm going to VidCon. Actually, this week I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow for VidCon. Okay. That's why we're filming on a Tuesday instead of on a Thursday. Jeff's coming out to VidCon also. Jeff's our advertising uh, guy. Is he Jeff's also- daughter coming? No, I think she's... In college somewhere. Oh. Not currently, but somewhere. Just asking. I didn't ask. Why would I ask him about his daughter, Todd? I don't know. I mean, you know. 
every time we talk about it, Jeff, I mean... What, you think I bring up his daughter? I mean, I, 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 how would I know about her? I don't bring up I've his only daughter. I've met Jeff once. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is I'm not definitely br- listening Jeff, right I'm now, Jeff, I'm not bringing too. up your daughter <laughs> right now. I mean, now. I met Jeff's like, wife. He's got a smoking hot wife. <laughs> Jeff is no longer going to VidCon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not going to see this until he's out. At, no, he won't see that's it at true, all. That's out true. Monday. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. His, what it'll about his really, wife? It'll be really awkward after VidCon. Say it to Jeff so he can play it for his wife. What? Oh. Oh, oh well, yeah. Well, we had sushi, and she, he's got a smoking hot wife. Wait, did she? Is she the one who brought up the fluffer? <gasps> she <gasps> brought did. up the fluffer. That's she right. Did. You know what? I forgot how awesome she actually yeah, is. Yeah, she was yes. funny. So she you got cool. a hot and a funny wife. That's a that's a small club right there. And then so you have welcome. Jeff. Me, Steven's got a hot funny wife. I've got a hot funny wife, and Jared has Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, speaking of Noah, FedEx was meant to leave me a package yesterday, right? Yeah. I leave a note on the door that says, use the box. With exc- took, exclamation points. Took, I saw that. Took, well, no, the exclamation points got added after the fact. <laughs> so you were yelling. I was yelling you were after yelling the fact. at him through your note. I left the note, okay, to call, and we have a box outside because I live in a building. No, did you take a note to, to <laughs> check on that note? So we had a building. We have a building that has a, a keypad at, outside. Yeah, yeah. And all you need to do is use the directory to find my name. Yep. So, of course, I come home to find a note that I miss my package taped to the door next to my note that says, use the box to call me. It's a big note, too. Can't miss I it. I mean, I, I was just like, what? It, was it a new person? It only happens with express packages. Hmm. My normal FedEx uh. guy... Text me. He's like, hey, I'm around the corner. Yeah, he'll call do, you, too. Do you, uh, you want to come down and meet me, and you need to sign for this? Or Hey, you want to grab a beer, too, while we're at it? <laughs> or he's like, uh, I got a package. Away together? He's like, I got a package. Are you home? I'm like, nah. He's like, all right, done. Because we live in a, a yeah. locked-up building yeah. with security yeah. cameras, and it's very nice when the FedEx guy and the UPS guy goes ahead mm-hmm. and does that for yep. you. I was waiting for, I'll just show you. I'll just show these. The 64 Audio Custom In-Ears. Ooh. These are the A12 models. They go for $2,000 on 64audio.com. Get out of town. I did not buy them. You should be able to drive those down to the, the stadium. <laughs> to the Porsche factory? <laughs> yeah. But they have In-Ears, custom molded ones that start at four ninety nine. dollars Anyway, go to their site. I also got custom earplugs, which are important. They're one ninety nine. dollars sure, yeah. But they gave us a code that you can use until the end of July. It is... Fro15, capital F-R-O-15, and you can get 15% off whatever you order. Cool. I'm testing these out. That's the whole point. Uh, And I will let you know what I think about them and all of that, but they came in the mail, and the custom ear molds are awesome. And you're going to probably compare them to your ultimate ear yeah, I'll probably the compare them. To. I need to sit here and figure out how I listen to both at the same that's time. That's kind of tough, yeah. To see what... But these are, they have different technologies, so that's why I wanted to try them out. Cool. Mm. Plus, they're a smaller company that isn't huge. They're a, They're... A bunch of brothers, I think, that are owners. Audio files. And they're much smaller. Well, you they got started five off hours with the, to test them out tomorrow when you take that flight. Well, that's part there of it. Go. Yeah, I get to fly. That's why I wanted them here, and I was very upset with FedEx. All right, right before we jump into photo news, here's the pluggy McPluggerson. Do you want a free lens cloth? Ooh, yes. With an order of a T-shirt. <gasps> I need. I need to clean my glasses. At store.fronosphoto.com, you can order any T-shirt right now, and if you say. In the comment section at checkout, stop being weird, Noah. <laughs> he will include, because Noah's in charge of shipping now. He took over for Heidi. That's great. Once we ship, uh, move the factory down here. Good riddance, asshole. Um, stop being weird, Noah, to get a free lens cloth. That's a $5 value. He'll include it with your order of a T-shirt if you do that. And Remember, if, you any, if you have any questions, you can call him. Here, let's call him now. Hi, Noah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, stop being weird, Noah, to get 15, no, not 15, to get a, the, with your t-shirt, to get a free lens cloth. Also, uh, we have the Mind to 2.8 shirt out there. You, you pick that one up. You can then get a free lens cloth as well. And I want to remind you that if you're purchasing I Shoot Raw anything, we cannot ship it to the European Union and that includes the UK currently. The U- part, they're part of the European Union, but if they ever be, decide not to be in it, we may consider at that time selling there, but <laughs> we currently can't because that's part of the agreement we made 
with that company that shall remain nameless for this time being that has trademarks that tried to sue me or did sue me or I mean, dream threatened to sue me. But sue the frowy, uh, uh, pasty Jew. But, <laughs> you can't tell no t-shirts. But we can't sell the I Shoot Raw anything, basically, in the European Union plus Switzerland and Norway, I think. Mm. I don't know where oh, they came up with this shit. Odd. Not like we shipped a lot of stuff there at all because yeah. shipping's about $18 for a t shirt. Because the tax there, what is it? Wow. No, that's just shipping on the t shirt. Then they have to pay VAT, that which is, is like 25%. Yeah, Could so we shoot them out of a t shirt cannon when we go to Germany? Is Idiot. Germany part of the European Union? It is? Schnell! Nine! Schnell! Nine! 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 Damn it! We need a meme with that that Hitler thing about about people not being able to buy t shirts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sad Hitler. Yes. Uh, I I think I hit all the stuff. Oh. So let's get into photo news and have some stop whining about doing your job music, Noah. <laughs> music. Brought to you by audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. Is he making eyes at me right now? He's hating you He's right now. He's gonna sing along though. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right. Insert sad Michael Jordan meme. <laughs> no, uh, sh- <laughs> Did you have a big burpee? Father Todd Did over here. Did you have a big burpee, Noah? <laughs> uh, Let's get into photo news. <sighs> so photo news, obviously, we missed last week, so I did go back a little bit farther than usual, so some of this might be a little older than usual. Uh, first up, we've got the world's oldest working photo studio has officially closed its doors after 176 years of operation. That's just insane. This thing was built in 1863. Uh, it's called Born and Shepherd. It was Asia's first... 1863. 1863. That's during the Decaro type years. Yep. And it was Asia's first and the world's longest running photography studio. Uh, so Jayant Gandhi, who's leased the building since 1964, has been in a lengthy legal battle with the owners of the building, uh, who is the Life Insurance Corporation of India, or LIC. LIC! He, he says, we only had the building on lease and due to a space issue and a dis- discrepancy on the rent, they wanted it back. We filed a case in 2002 and finally lost the battle to the court order. Uh, now he goes on to say, I am sad that it's gone, but in the end, there are some things that are just out of one's control. Uh, it's just amazing that it lasted this long. 176 years in operation. So they're just going to cease operation? They're not going to go to a new building? That's Apparently, yeah. Huh. Yeah. We've got Because we've got some room at the new Fro Factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ran out the first floor. Uh, we've got a rare Burns and Sawyer 1000 millimeter F45 Omnitar lens that was made for NASA back in 1964. It's now for What is auction. with 1964? I don't know. And 64 audios. That's true. 64audio.com. Current owner, Jim Headley, who uh, he's been a camera collector for 34 years, acquired the lens nearly 20 years ago after a close friend closed up his camera shop and he just needed to get rid of it. Uh, this thing weighs 70 pounds. It has a 10 inch diameter. It's about four feet long and it has a lens shade that is about the size of like a small trash can. Uh, he notes like, that it uh, takes two to three to people for me. <laughs> two to three people just to get this thing out of the car and set it up and that he can't do much yeah. with it without suffering from severe back pain, which is like the main reason that he's getting rid of it. Uh, The giant lens comes complete with the original case, a special rolling tripod designed to hold it, and all the initial NASA ID tags are still attached (laughs) to it, too, which is pretty cool. Now, to use it, he built a custom mount to hook up his Canon EOS cameras to it, and he currently uses a Canon 40D to shoot with it, making it a 1600 millimeter equivalent lens. What the hell are you using a 40D for, dude? I know. It's a little, uh, little outdated at this point. Now, he'll be selling the lens later this year through R&R Auctions in New Hampshire. No price has been mentioned just yet, but based off other similar auctions, he believes it'll go for about $70,000 at least. Yeah, because you need that lens. <laughs> and I, I mean, linked... who, who doesn't need a 1,000 millimeter 4.5? He posted some of the sample photos that he took with And they this probably thing. look terrible. <laughs> now, it ranges from two miles away from the objects that he's shooting to 20 miles away. Oh, yeah. He notes that seven miles away is like the sweet spot. That this Seven thing miles from. away. Well, what is it designed? Was it designed for shooting space? I guess so. Because, uh, again, be... it was designed specifically for NASA. So He's super creeper right now. <laughs> well, you know, you know what Todd would be doing with that. Oh, Across the street from... Uh, 20 Moore, miles away. The, the, that girl's college. Art college. <laughs> downtown. What, what art college? Moore? Oh, Moore? You don't remember that? That, that? that college used to be right up the street from my school. No. They, th- those are the, those girls are like the Omega Moos. They know how to party. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Big news for Apple fanatics. Uh, Apple's officially finally bringing raw photo support to iOS 10. That's huge. Now, after the new iOS was announced at the recent WWDC presentation, uh, photographers spotted the raw photo editing text that was somewhat hidden in the background of their update slides for developers, and there was no specific mention throughout the keynote. Are they allowed to, the new to sell cameras, though, support. like that in the EU? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, just, as they come out with T-shirts, they'll probably get sued. Now, yeah. developers who have taken a look at the release notes say it will let you shoot RAW straight from the camera app, creating a DNG plus JPEG photo set. Hmm. Uh, the RAW capture will be supported by only recent models of iOS-enabled devices uh, and only by their back cameras, including the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, the SE, and the iPad Pro 9.7-inch. Actually, this one right here. Uh, the public beta for iOS 10 will officially launch in July. So this is good. It's huge. It's a good thing. And, and before before you... Android fanboys get out there and be like, this Android has had it for months. My, Worst uh, problem. my, my uh, Galaxy 445 <laughs> already had the um, <laughs> raw capabilities uh, to Super raw. exterminate and uh, ex- 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 excalculate uh, the rawage of the JPEG uh, previously, so go screw yourself, Jew. Right, so when I, when I, made, when I made the video about that, yeah. I chose not to mention anything about Android. You probably mentioned Android. it like the first five takes. No, not at all. Really? I said no. I wasn't mentioning Android because it was about the news story. It is was that Apple iOS 10 is going to now give you raw support. It wasn't that Android has been doing this forever. It's about time Apple caught up. It doesn't matter. That's yeah. not the point. That wasn't the point I was trying to make. So, but of course, you know, people in the comments are like, "The Android can do this already." It's like, yeah. Thank you. We know that. But more pictures are taken every freaking day with an iPhone than anything else, which makes that a bigger deal. Is it a major deal? It's not a big ass deal because most people don't know what the hell to do. They they complain about file size already. It's like Ken Rockwell's not going to want to shoot raw. Actually, I bet you Ken Rockwell will shoot raw with his iPhone at this point. You think? No. Hell no, he's not going to shoot raw with his iPhone. Because again, the pros of shooting raw is that it, it has more data. The cons of shooting raw is that it has more data. Ton so of files. So that that's, file size is going to be crazy. So people aren't going to know what to do with it, but it's a good thing to help. Tr- like, I don't think that the... Uh, my question in the video was, do you think industry people like Nikon, Canon, and all those companies are going to be scared of the w- fact that you could shoot raw with your iPhone? And the honest to God's truth is they should probably be happy because if people realize that they can take better pictures or they're getting better results with their iPhone, yep. they're going to want to graduate to something else and be like, oh, snap, imagine what I could do with a quote-unquote real camera. That's true. And that's what I have to say about that. And I also wonder how they're going to enable it in the settings. Is it just going to be something you can flick on and off? Well, like just like live photos, raw the or dumbest thing where in the just world. Like you press live photos on the top, it'll say like DNG uh, or I just want to lock or... it into raw. Exactly, me too. I was hoping they would say raw from the stage, but I got bored with that keynote, so I stopped watching. Yeah, they, they didn't mention it at all. Nope. It was just slowly hidden in the background of that one slideshow oh for the Oh my developers. God, but what if they start making commercials that say, I shoot raw? Somebody's getting sued. They can't, I can't sue them for that. I can't sue them for that. <laughs> we can no longer sell I shoot raw shirts in America. No, either. if they or try or to anywhere. make, if Apple tries to make a shirt that says I shoot raw, then on the other hand, I have a trademark for that. But if they come to me and say, hey, can we make T-shirts and promote you? I'll be like, sure. You know, why not? Give me boatloads of money first. Or why not make me the I shoot raw guy that can you hear me now? True. And be like, I'll do the commercials. Who was that for? AT&T? The Can, no, you hear me? the Can You Hear Me Now was Verizon. Was it Verizon? And recently, the guy starts, so new commercial starts, and yeah. he goes, Can You Hear Me Now? That's what I used to say when I worked for Verizon. But now I work for Sprint, because everything is basically the same. Can you hear me now, bitches? He doesn't say bitches, but now he's making Sprint commercials. He looks fatter, though. Speaking of carriers, AT&T had no service at all at Firefly. There was Why? zero towers. Like It was in the middle of nowhere in Delaware. I mean, it is in Dover, it's Delaware. It's Dover, 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 Delaware. It's the Dover Downs. But they own like 100 acres of land, and it's like in the middle of that oh. big farmland area. So I don't think the signal reaches out that far. So I had zero service for like five days straight. It sucked. But Verizon and Sprint and everyone else... Perfect service oh, throughout the geez. entire festival. Yeah. Whoa. So get on that AT and T. Moving forward, we've got a new 4K time lapse by photographer Paul Richardson. He takes you all around Europe. All around the world, same song. All around the world. All around the world, same song. Going all around the world. All, 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 all around the world. Tupac, go ahead and rock this. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now I clown around with the under. Sorry. Underground? Nope. My name is... 
My, ne- my nose is thick like a pickle. Tickle your, tickle your butt in a Burger King bathroom. <laughs> Those are the lyrics. That is kind of. Do the lyrics, Todd. Kind of, no. Do the lyrics. <laughs> no. What's on, his name? On, Although I did get an Intel shout out at, at Cannonball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Who? Humpty Hump? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Humpty Hump. Did you see Jaleel had a had a had a uh, kid in play going? Fresh is amazing. Fresh cut. Fresh cut. Yeah, yeah man. Fresh cut. All right, back to this. What was that movie? God, with Tupac. House Party. Oh, what? what? Tupac? Where you know, uh, with Dan Aykroyd playing the judge, and oh, that's the soundtrack that that's from. Same right. song is from. Uh, I forget what that movie's uh, man, called. I forget. Yeah. Guys, what movie was that? Leave it in the comments. So this 4K time lapse is entitled Patience, which is exactly what this photographer had a lot of. The video took over a thousand hours of shooting to create this whole video, and it consists of over. That's Patience. Brought to you by the uh, the Guns N' Roses tour. Cool. So it took over a thousand hours of shooting to create this thing, and it consists of over three hundred thousand still frames. Uh, he notes that every second of video took about seven hours of still photography. Um. You would never be able to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> Two seconds go by. What the hell? What does it all mean? Now he used his Canon five D Mark III, the seven D, uh, and a six D. And Richardson says. Uh, this video showcases the results of many sleepless nights, hundreds of thousands of photos, and countless hours shooting. And you can watch the full, it's only two minute time lapse over on the site. Is it good? Really good stuff. Yeah. He goes through Europe? And t- all of Europe. Yeah, it's like his best of time lapse, pretty Did much. Did he wear an I shoot raw shirt? He did not wear an I shoot raw shirt, no. Were there lawyers chasing him? Maybe. No, yeah, maybe. I'll arrest you if I see you with your raw shirt on, you blimey blokes. Do you know what's funny? Bo Rat was on the other day. Borat? I, I haven't watched Borat in a long time. Borat? Borat. Oh, Borat. And so he's like, very nice. You know, he's like, they're doing, you know, they do the running of the bulls everywhere else. <laughs> I forgot about the scene. About the running and of the Jews? It's the running of the Jews. <laughs> hurry, hurry, break that egg. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's about to lay an egg. It's just so wrong, but it's so funny. <laughs> you have to like... He's Jewish, isn't he? Sasha Baron Cohen. He's, uh, he's Jewish. I think he is. Oh, my yeah. God. That is so funny. That night, they got the running of the Jews. Quick, give them all your money. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is so funny. I love that stuff. Where did that come from? Uh, through Europe, I guess. Oh, okay. Borat. <laughs> Introducing the Osiris F1, it's a new personal automatic film processor. Now, unlike large industrial film processors, the F1 is compact and affordable, what they say, measuring just 22 by 18 by 10 inches. So it is pretty small. Uh, however, it has everything you expect from a commercial processor, which is automatic pumping, temperature oh. control, uh, automatic chemical pumping? sorting, oh. <laughs> liquid recovery for your data storage. Thank you. And, Does it uh, come with a flashlight, though? <laughs> And automatic cleaning. Does it come with Wi-Fi? And it has automatic cleaning. Does That's it, what the flashlight doesn't have. Jesus. I heard I that from Kevin. My, does it attach to my iPad? <laughs> does it come with 3D goggles? It does come with four presets for the machine, which include C41 and E6 processing, <laughs> along with two custom Vibrate, buttons. Vibrate, heat with liquid. Tears. Tears. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're funny, Todd. So it also has two custom buttons that can be programmed for negative, positive, and black and white film processes, too. And you can see a product video showing how it works over on the site. Now, the only thing is there's no word on if it'll actually hit the U.S. Currently, I think it's only being sold in China. But it's cool. That, I mean, it's yeah, small. If you want to develop your own film. Yeah. How much is it? 700 and some dollars? $759 if you were to equate it to you know dollars, U.S. dollars. How, mu- how much is the uh, chemicals? I'm not sure. That's something you would probably supply on your own. Well, no, I'm sure if they were a smart company, they would be selling you the chemicals also. Yeah. Uh, And then we've got, speaking of film, Pentax has a new product called the Film Duplicator 4x5, which does just that. It duplicates large format film, except digitally. Uh, The Film Duplicator allows you to digitize your film from 35 millimeter 
all the way up to 4x5 by using a DSLR or medium format camera, uh, a flash, and your film. Hmm. Now, you simply line up your film, you set focus, and you just take a photo. It sandwiches the film between two sheets of anti-glare glass to minimize the effect of interference fringe, and it also comes with a 4x5 Dude, film holder. I love holder. girls that have fringe that's also known as bangs. <laughs> comes with a 4x5 film holder to keep the film flat during duplication work, uh, even when working with warped film, they say. And no price has been mentioned yet, but it's expected to sell for about 1200 bucks since the original duplicator that maxes out at 120 film currently sells for a little over $1,100, and it is not this. Well, so <laughs> I figured I would talk about this because it came in the mail. This is random. an e- Epson. Well, you're talking about film duplicators. Yes. This will do it. This is the Epson Perfection V850 Pro that Jeff made a call. Jeff's our ad guy because I'm like, I need to scan some stuff. You know so he- Jeff with the hot wife. Oh, yeah, the one we alluded to earlier. So, I haven't taken it out of the box yet, but I have a whole bunch of negatives to scan, and it will do a whole bunch of stuff, so that thing's like $950. So you will not be getting the film duplicator, is what you're saying? Uh, no, and also it's a Pentex. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Rico fans hate you. Uh, Wait, what's Rico have to do with it? Doesn't Rico make Pentex? Shut up, Napoleon! <laughs> <laughs> it's Uncle Rico. So there's a huge Hasselblad announcement tomorrow. Huge. It's going to be a live stream. Um, but the, this is the only information we have available today at the time of this recording. Yeah, so this I'm is talk Tuesday. About that. Normally we don't talk about leaked specs, but it's probably going to be confirmed by the time this video comes out. Right. So what, if you want to get the full information, it'll be over on the site, frontosphoto.com slash rawtalk-187. Yeah. On an undercover cop. On an undercover cop. So when this does come out, I will update the website and make sure all the actual specs are there. But... With the information we have now, Hasselblad has officially, officially announced a game changer in the world of photography with their new X1D camera. X1D. <laughs> Calling it the world's first medium format mirrorless camera. That's really all we know as From, of right now. Yeah, that's all we We don't know all Again, the other specs. At the time I guess of this recording. they kind of rumored 50 megapixels or something, but a medium format mirrorless camera sounds interesting. I just love a Hasselblad that has the flopping mirror because it just sounded so awesome. Kerplunk. They also uh, rumored that the price will cost about $9,000. $9,000. That's nothing (laughs) for Todd. Chump change Uh. for Todd. Todd, can can you show us what $9,000 looks like, please? Joe's not here. You got to make sure it stops. (laughs) (laughs) Show us $9,000. Joe can't pick it up today. Joe's not here. No, are you going to pick it up? <laughs> oh, I hope they heard that. Uh, so we've got a new project called Toothpick, which they they say is short for "Who took this picture?" Yeah, because Toothpick is spelled with an H O O Pick. Well, that's like your text. I mean, that's yeah. probably how you would spell it. Uh, apparently, it's the T O from Took, and then the T H from this, and then like the P I C from Picture. So, who took this picture? Uh, they're working on a camera fingerprint database that could be a major tool in helping photographers fight copyright infringement and photo theft online. Fringe is also short for bangs. <laughs> now, two thick <laughs> notes. That just like fingerprints, no two camera sensors are exactly the same. They have very minimal uh, differences known as sensor pattern noise, essentially having like a unique kind of like a fingerprint. Exactly. Uh, on every photo taken with it. Now, the team, they're currently downloading 50 million photos from Flickr and crunching the data so with 100... So they're stealing photos is what they're doing. No, Creative Commons, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. They're crunching the data with 100 computers for a proof of concept, and later this summer, they're planning to launch a toothpick demo, which will be a simple web app that allows anyone to upload a photo and check it against their camera database. And they hope to eventually have it built into search engines like Google and Bing for whoever even uses Bing. that anymore. Is that even around anymore? Bing. 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 I don't know. Bing. Uh, a couple more news stories uh, on the topic of copyright infringement. Getty Images, they're Fringe. suing... Short for bangs. On the, topics, on the topic of bangs, Getty Images is suing a man who allegedly sold thousands of stolen Getty Images through and a Facebook group. his name is Todd Wolf. <laughs> the what? stock... The stock agency filed a lawsuit last week which claims that Walter A. Kowachik illegally downloaded and sold 3,400 <laughs> high-res images from their library. Wait, it's Ed Kowalczyk? <laughs> Not the singer Ed of, uh, of Live. Ed from Live? Yeah. Bob Snifflebottom. <laughs> no, it's K-O-W-A-L-C-Z-U-K, which is very similar to how Ed Kowalczyk actually spells his name. One, oh, one. That's Creed. The, oh. Do you know what song came on my old, old... So 
when Noah was driving in the car with me, I took from my house the old, my old CD case yeah. from the car. It was my old MP3 CDs. Just full of Creed CDs. One of them was like, it says songs with, with 190, 174 songs on it. So, and it didn't really say what was on there. Yeah. So there was a bunch of Creed, but then it came up to <laughs> Tantric. Remember Tantric? What was the one song they, they had? I mean, that's what that guy sounds like. He's just I can't like remember. He's performing. He's, like, he's performing down here. Yeah, on July twelfth, I think uh, Scott Stapp is coming to Sugarhouse Casino. Is he singing all the Creed hits? <laughs> Some of the fam- most famous Creed hits, like "With Arms Wide Open Under the Moonlight." Does he sing "Here on Floor"? Is that him? What? What did you just say? <laughs> what? Even flow? Is that him? That's no. Pearl Jam. I don't know. Even flow. However, everyone thinks, yeah. What the right I The big apologize thing is everyone thought Scott Stapp up. ripped off of uh, Eddie Vedder. Oh. But they were huge. Yeah. Creed was huge. huge. My favorite song is One, oh, one. The only way is one. I see thunder. I see rain. Wait, that's James Taylor. The, the unify be the one Sit from another In the bridge Just be dignified It's your brother One Oh one The only way is one Oh, are we back? We done? All right, so back to this. They note that he did this by acquiring the passwords of two major Getty clients, then selling them in bulk with a minimum purchase order of 400 images at about 75 cents a photo. Uh, Now, instead of noting that they were Getty photos, he called them spaghetti photos (gasps) when he was selling them. Chef for your D. And I think he was also selling Associated Press photos, too, and he was calling them Apple photos. Or something like that. Now, Getty caught on and actually bought some of the stolen images from him to see how he did it. Uh, they were given the same instructions every single time they bought from him. So they would give him the Getty catalog numbers for the images they wanted. Uh, they would pay, and then Kowalchuk, or whatever his name is, delivers the photos Ed through a file sharing site. Bear share? And Getty is officially seeking damages for willful copyright infringement, contributory infringement, computer fraud, and Digital Millennium Copyright Act violations. And what does Ed Kowalczyk, what's he up? Is he going to get arrested? He didn't respond or anything. He didn't respond. It wasn't me. <laughs> I, I was swear hacked. I didn't do it. I was, I was hacked. I'm going to build a wall. I was at a concert I'm singing live songs. Uh, and then we've got a new plug-in called LR slash Instagram. It lets you post directly to Instagram straight from Lightroom. Uh, with the tagline, direct from Lightroom to Instagram, no fiddling. There's no need for a third-party web client. Nope, we're done. This is what happens when we miss a week. <laughs> Oh, he, he's, he's got, got a lot of singing. pent-up energy, trust god. me. No, I used Jeez. energy two times last night. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> uh, they say the new plugin simply adds on as a published collections plugin and will let you export to not only one, but multiple Instagram accounts one, once you authorize oh, them. One. Seriously, let me get through this. The only way is one. Here's how it works. You install the plugin, you add photos to your published collection, fill in the caption and tags One as you would through the social the media app. the loneliest number that I ever knew. I'm done. I'm done. Two That's is photo news this week. better than one. Enjoy it. I'm just busting your balls. I know you are. You've been away. It's pissing me off. <laughs> Todd, you want to chime in? Nope. <laughs> I'll be quiet. Just don't say one again. <laughs> <laughs> so then you just simply hit publish and there you go. Now, can you upload with tags and everything? If you would have listened, I said you fill in the captions and tags as you put up the picture. Now, do you do one at a time? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they say it's free to download and try out, but the creator is asking you to show your support by registering it for $10 directly from the LR plugin manager, and it'll work on Lightroom 3.0 and higher, along with CC, and it works on both Mac and Windows platforms, and you can find a link to that over on the website if you understood anything I just said with all the interruptions. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I'm apologizing. Are you? Yes. That's weird. 
Uh, Instagram on that topic has officially hit 500 million registered users. Uh, the social media giant says 300 million of those people use the app every single day. Uh, they say they grew by 200 million in the past 18 months and 100 million in just the last nine. And Instagram says, thank you for your creativity, your openness, and your passion for sharing your, word, your worlds with one another. We can't wait to see what you create next. I, I saw a, a statistic that said in the last year, Instagram likes and and comments are down thirty huh. percent. And I think I've I think I've noticed definitely a change in the last few days to my feed. I still haven't noticed it. I, like it de- I definitely noticed last, it. And, I missed and, two of your videos. I had to go through your profile what? and check it and, out. Yeah, yeah. And, and I obviously always like your stuff, so it's weird. And now it's more of people that I've liked that I'm noticing, like friends, as opposed to like. Random celebrities that post too much for their own good. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I find myself using it less and less personally every day. Yeah. I'm more of a Snapchat fan. But. Well, I'll tell you how I did use it, though. I, when I put up the five-minute portrait, sorry, the real-world review of the, the, the Canon 1DX yes. Mark II. Yep. Luckily, it's not the Mark I. And I, uh, I put up 10 photos. I did one of 10. This is one of 10 from oh, the yeah. Real World Review. And I spl- spread it out over maybe three days. Okay. I totally wish I could have automatically set it to do it every hour for 10 hours. But I, it was great because I basically picked 10 images that I was going to upload over a couple day period. And they did very well. Yeah. It's interesting to see which ones had more likes than other ones. One that I thought would have had more didn't. And the one that did have uh, like 1,800 to 2,000 likes was the one of the girl... Uh, going to do the long jump, not the one you like, but where she's running straight ahead. Gotcha. And people seem to, I guess, like that. Hmm. Or maybe it showed up in their feed better. Who knows? I mean, maybe it's just like the Facebook reach where it just doesn't reach anybody like it does with Facebook. Yeah. Right. That's and we're, and we're toying with Facebook Live right now because the other day I did the live Facebook mm-hmm. from my desktop. That was pretty cool. Because I, and I play, the only thing I video. noticed with that was there was a little bit of a latency error. It seemed to be like your audio was a little delayed like maybe five frames off or something like that oh i think well, it's your mac though i don't think it's could be the actual well because it has to get it and feed it up you can actually set a delay that's what i'm saying if you, you put it set, off by like five frames you should be able to match the video but you could set a delay not to audio that i found okay but you could connect a separate recorder and probably do that or zoom h6 i don't know it's it's wirecast it was 500 bucks for that app wow um, That's expensive. To unlock it. Well, but it's something that we can use in the new factory cool. to do different things. At time I liked I, how it was like a commentary. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. We'll see how different. it works. I, a lot of stuff is evolving and changing. All right, so back to news. We've got uh, Pete Souza, President Obama's photographer. He sat down with BBC News Night for a recent video interview to uh, chat about his time as the president's photographer for the past eight years. He says by the time he's done with the Obama administration, he estimates that he will have taken nearly two million photos of the president. Do you know how you get to two million? One million plus one million. Now, in the short video interview, Souza opens up about how you see him, the president, in every aspect of his life, from the serious national security moments to the playful ones in the White House and all around the world. Now, you can all check out, around the world, same song. You can check all out the full the video world. over on the site. It's only a short interview. It's like maybe four minutes. I hope they do a full-on documentary, two-hour series yep. like PBS yeah. did for the president's photographer and do it on Pete Souza. Well, and it was cool because he also mentioned how Time magazine wanted to do a piece on him and they said can you narrow down like the top 10 photos of president obama and he said he couldn't even narrow it down past 90 that's well, how I many even like, even wow. 90 out of 2 million yeah that's i'd love crazy. to see not those 90 yeah, yeah. 90 and in the 90. video you see a bunch of his favorites it's kind of like a slideshow too that's yeah, cool. he's talking about i would i would i would love to see that documentary mm-hmm. yeah uh, but I posted that over on the website, and I also posted a link to uh, the white house's official Flickr page which are pretty much full of just his photos and i follow him on instagram me too He's got like half a million, I think. Wow! Well, I remember he only when he posts just like yeah, the president photos. That's yeah. what he yeah, posts. Yeah, he posts. Well, like he every posts day. for the White really? House, and then he posts on his own feed. Also, I'm sure it's not him. It's probably whoever works for him. He yeah. may do it. You don't know that. I just feel like he's always got a camera in his hand. He probably doesn't have time to just put it down. He probably has to get approval first too. That too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd be got, there shooting photos. Be like, is this okay to put out? Yep, I'm doing yep. it anyway. 
Photoshop has officially released their 2015.5 CC update. Uh, there are three new features in this release, which include content-aware crop, face-aware liquify, and the selection and masking task space. Now, we talked about most of these uh, when it was announced a few weeks back, uh, but the face-aware liquify tool we didn't really mention, that will automatically detect when there's a face present and let you highlight individual features to liquefy them, like their eyes, their lips, whatever. So you like can make you're like a cartoon. Like you're giving them a stroke. Caricature type if you want. Oh, or you can right. make it more serious and, okay. you know. Hi. Now, they also note that there's a four times uh, performance improvement when working with fonts and content aware fill features. And that's it for Photo News this week. Cool. I'm glad you got through that in one, one fell swoop. I'm really glad I got through that. I know. You don't have one more? But wait. There's one more thing. I hate you guys. <laughs> Welcome back, Steven. Do you know how many times I called you while you were away? I don't know. I didn't have service. Zero. <laughs> how many times did I email you while you were away? I didn't have service again. You, but you got your emails. No, how you many didn't, phone you calls did, did I get? When's Steven coming back? I never said that once. <laughs> I want to shoot something. When's I, Steven coming back? I was back? just freaking, about, freaking out about the Canon 1DX Mark II review just because there was export errors I had that night, and I was literally up all night. I couldn't sleep. And Nothing. The computer kept jamming on me. It was a mess. Yeah, no, it was fine. And it exported with a couple errors, but whatever. Yeah. Not a big deal. No, nope, it was good. It worked I, out in the end. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's a really good review. Yeah. I think Canon people will be happy, and I think everybody out there will be happy. Hopefully. It was, it's, it's one of the most solid reviews that you will find on the internet of reviews of any kind. The only thing I think I wish we would have had in that is, uh, is more drone footage, just like the D500, where we got yeah. to incorporate that. Well, we Obviously, tried. we couldn't fly it over. We tried. Well, we tried. It wouldn't take off. Well, that too. We didn't update it the It said it wasn't updated, though I clearly updated it before I left. Yeah. Well, I've updated it since, so it's definitely working now. Okay, what comes next, Steven? The chicken uh, the Usually gear of the week. Oh. We do gear of the week first? Or flying solo. I or think, whatever you want to do. Do we do flying solo or gear of the week? I thought we usually do gear of the week, then flying solo. Let me check I my notes. I could be wrong Is about this show that, 187 though. or show 7? 187. <laughs> oh, all right. Just checking. <laughs> 187. When you uh, take a week off, man, you forget everything. Oh, I, I, I have photo shoot. news, then gear of the week. Yeah, see, I think but it's I didn't write in here flying solo, so ah. I think we should do. Let's do gear of the week. So here is gear of the week. I almost reached for it two weeks ago and then realized it was under NDA. Oh till yes, today <laughs> June twenty first. I was like, uh, maybe I. I was like, shit. There's an NDA. I'm I so can't glad show you this. Checked. I'm like, I'm like, oops. <laughs> I'm almost like, let the let the bad. cat out of the bag. Not yeah. like it's a major thing, but this is the My Passport Wireless Pro. It's a second generation thing from Western Digital. It's actually pretty cool for what it is. I this remember is, when we talked about the first one. Right, and this is the two terabyte one. They totally changed up the design of it. They made it more different than the first one. How do, how do you get how do you get into this? <laughs> bite how, it. Bite, how does just this, bite it. How does this work? Yeah, just bite it. One just se- bite give me it. one second, Stephen. Just bite it. Oh, there it is. So here it is. This is it. But it's a portable wireless hard drive. Wow, it does look okay? a lot different. So it is pretty darn cool because it has a 10, I believe it's a 10-hour battery life. It has an SD card built in slot. But what they didn't have on the old one is they also have a USB 3.0 port. So you could plug a card reader in and transfer the files from the card reader onto this thing. Very cool. Then wow. you could use this. I don't even know what the hell a Plex server is, but they kept using that word Plex server. It's some kind of video server. But you could use this where you could access files from it. Todd could access files from it. Noah could access files from it Don't because it will it. also allow us to access the files. So it's something that you take into the... What? Oh, and there's an app. Yep. And there's an app. So it's something that you could take into the wilderness if you don't want to take your laptop and then make sure that you're backing stuff up to it because it has battery store, you know, 10 hours of battery life, and then you could back stuff up to it. And I believe it fits into the My Passport uh, in the Western digital um, world, yeah. uh, Ecosystem Mm -hmm. of all their hard drives and stuff. I'm sure. I don't know the price because I didn't look it up. Good research. I forget what the (laughs) price is. It's up on the site, damn it. The price of the of this thing is up on the site. It comes in two terabytes and three terabytes. So it's the second generation, which means it's going to be better than the first, Very in cool. all honesty. Very nice. So that's... We should take it when we travel or something. We, sh- we should probably consider that. Yeah. yeah. As a way to store stuff and, and then stream stuff if we needed to stream stuff. We'd take it to Germany. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have flying solo, right? No, I just want to throw one more thing in there. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sugru! Sugru, just go, just go look this up. It says fix anything, module or glue. We are, they asked us to play with this stuff, so we have to play with it and come up with some ideas for like photo hacks. How can this stuff be used? 
Don't eat it, but it's moldable glue. Well, it's moldable putty stuff that in 24 hours, it, it, it hardens into a plastic. So I was thinking that something cool for it would be like a hook on a tripod or a light stand. You basically mold a hook there so it could hold a bag or it could hold the wires up so you, they're not running all over the place. That's something minor. Or they have a magnet kit. And with the magnet kit, we could basically make our own, uh, take a Gorilla Pod That's cool. and magnetize the heavier one with magnets on the bottom oh, just nice. by using this stuff. But there's also household uses for it, fixing your iPod cables and stuff like that. Anyway, go to Sugru's website. Just Google Sugru. Look it up. Up. Tell us what you think about it. They asked us to play with it, and we still haven't played with it. So Cool. I gave it to Richie. I got Richie some orange stuff so he could take it out and try it on set because it seems like something he would use. <laughs> okay, it's time for Flying Solo, but we didn't do the uh, Photo News Music Wrap-Up brought to you by audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. Why don't we pick some music? What should we do, Todd? Some one more time? Why don't we do some one-time music? One time. Oh, that's Wyclef. In three, two, one. One time, two times. And there's your audio blocks music brought to you by audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. That's where you can go get your audio blocks music. All right, so I've got questions here. And the questions that we asked for this time are something a little different. Okay. We have the Ask Us Anything style. Wow. Where like Reddit style? Well, AMA, right? But yeah. why do they Ask call it an anything. AMA? Oh, ask me anything. that's what the M anything. stands for? I think yeah. so. <laughs> oh, that, oh, I have Ask Us Anything. I'm like, how'd they get AMA well, out well, of this Ask Us Anything? the Raw Talk version, so it's, yeah. ask, it's A-U-S. So I asked you guys to ask us anything A-U-A. over... A-U- A-U-A. <laughs> Welcome to spelling. This is A-U-A. I feel like Jared. <laughs> that's, that stands for Australia. Oi! So these are a little different than normal, so we're going to go through these. Okay. And see what we've got. All right, go! Anthony Foley, would you ever vlog? <gasps> so I was actually hoping for more. I feel like you kind of do vlog. Well, I was hoping for um, specific, less gear stuff and more actually ask us anything type of stuff. Uh, but there are some Switch in there. Up, but yeah. would I ever vlog? Uh, I think I set out to do it one day. And then you realize that, no, vlogging actually sucks because there's so much editing involved with it because you have to come up with a story throughout your day, and that's what Casey Neistat is for, and that's what he does. I personally don't want to vlog everything because I don't think that delivers enough value to anybody out there because it's not that interesting what I do every day. It's just me, like, yelling at Todd. you on the phone, yelling at Noah, the you just sitting at your computer. Were you playing the piano when I was away? (laughs) Yelling at Noah again. I got a from my neighbor. (laughs) Just be the same thing every day. The greatest. (laughs) Well, I will also tell you on Saturday at 6 o'clock, I also got a text from them because uh, my buddy Jude was playing the piano. And I'm like, I don't care. Was he playing Hey Jude? No, he wasn't playing Hey Jude. (laughs) Damn it. So would I ever vlog? No, I wouldn't actually do that type of vlogging. Um, That doesn't personally interest me, but I use Snapchat and do other stuff like that. If it could deliver value, then yeah, but I don't think there's value in a daily vlog for what I do. I guess Snapchat is essentially daily vlog. It is. It's it very is. similar. Yeah. yeah. She, she, Shahin and sorry for everyone. Huh? <gasps> what's the ex- what's the worst experience you've ever had with a client? Anybody have anything pop out off of their out of their mind right now, right off the rip? Um, Todd, do you have one? I mean, yeah, is you know. I had a client switch the whole entire concept of a music video that we shot in its entirety after it was done and edited. And then they wanted to do total reshoots and all kinds of stuff. It switched the whole thing up. And I was like, you know what? I didn't really sign up for this. This is way stupider, and I'm out. Do you have anything? I don't think so. I don't think I have any really like real horror stories that I can think of. I don't really have any horror stories with clients, yeah, I, I that that I can think of, I, no. Well, the only thing is like I got more horror stories at a at a wedding on disrespectful people at a wedding. Oh yeah, being disrespectful to me and my assistant or who I was shooting with that day. It was just very disrespectful when they were drunk and belligerent. That oh. is, those are those experiences that you're like, yeah, no, I didn't sign up to be abused. That's kind of Noah's job, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now that I think about it. Yep. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Jan Border. Yona Border. What is your favorite camera of all time at Jared Poland? From Yona. From Israel. Grin emoticon. So I think 
favorite camera of all time probably ranks up there somewhere around the Nikon D3. You slash love that D3S. camera. Yeah. That camera changed the world. Yeah. It was the first camera. I mean, you could shoot at 4,000 ISO. You could shoot at 6,400 ISO and get results. It was, a fu- it, was, it was the game changer camera. I think the D3S may have been my all-time favorite camera at all-time favorite camera. Yeah, I mean, you the still D4, reference and talk about that camera a lot. I, I do, well, that was the camera that started Frono's photo with the five minutes yeah. of video. Yeah, the video sucked. That wasn't the point. That camera was the game life changer of of all. It allowed us. It allowed me to do things I could never think of doing with a camera, and many other people as well. You have a favorite camera or anything? <sighs> not really. I mean, I've just always loved my 5D Mark III. There's not. <laughs> before that, I've was shooting with Rebels and the 7D and a bunch of other film cameras too. But I would say the 5D Mark III for me was like the all-around camera for everything. Mark II. We, when, when I realized you could shoot de- really good-looking movies on a, on a 5D Mark II. You mean let other people shoot it, not you shoot it. Well, when I saw the results that a camera person could get with a Mark II, I was like... That that just that blew my mind because prior to that you'd throw lens adapters on like a you know a Panasonic yeah DVX that was a game changer for the entire yeah. video industry for sure. Yep. I Dave Moore, Todd and Steven, what is a good DSLR shoulder rig that isn't twelve hundred dollars? Just realized my El Cheapo is no bueno with a heavy twenty four seventy. We're building a wall. Well, that's the thing. I mean, <laughs> all the cheap ones aren't great. So yeah. you kind of have to pony up and dish out the, the dough So the Red that. River ones you guys Red used. Red Rock. Oh, Red River's the paper. Red, Red Rock? Isn't Red Rock. Red, Red, Rock. Red Rock Mobile. <laughs> Not Red River. Red Rock Micro. <laughs> Red Rock Micro. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. Red Rock yeah. Micro. I love that shoulder yeah. rig. I forget specifically. And I think it's just called their DSLR kit or something like that. And then like they that. had that beaded... Uh, well, like, the beaded shoulder pad. Yeah. yeah. And... Our buddy, Matt Jaffe, who shot yeah. the Grand Canyon show with us, does for it. some reason, he just shoots with the rods right on his shoulder. I don't know how <laughs> he does it. man. That's he because really he, had, he had custom rod holes put into his shoulder so that it could slide in. <laughs> but I told him, I'm like, one day I gave him the the, sh- the padded one, and he said it was like the best thing ever. Oh, yeah. He said he's going to start shooting with uh, I mean, when it actual... comes to shoulder rigs, the one thing I'll say is you can get a cheap rig, like the mount. Stable, yeah. But where I, with the, what I had to change, I got a whole cheap setup. But then I realized the follow focus did. was really chintzy. But you could also buy a separate follow focus and attach well, that's it to what that I did. rig. Then I put a Red Rock follow focus on my cheap rig, and then that's what that's what I used for years. But the Red Rock the Red Rock follow focus alone isn't that a couple hundred bucks? That's that ain't. Well, cheap. you have to buy yeah. pieces yeah. of the puzzle. Yeah. The, we yeah. we like the Red Rock stuff. We really like those people out there. Uh, I like those people more than the other people we met with who didn't give us the time of day. <laughs> I will, I'll just leave their company name out of it, but. They were excited to see us, whereas the other people were like, who are you? What do you want from us? Oh. Yeah, as far as a cheap alternative, though, I don't really have anything to actually recommend. Yeah, that, that's tough. Because, again, you could get the metal parts probably cheap and build your own, but I feel like the follow focus you probably have to spring How for. much was the ICANN that we never returned? I want to say it was 1600 for Right, the even that kit. is 1600 yeah. bucks. and ICANN is a company that makes affordable stuff. More of a third-party company, yeah. Right, and it... We never set it up. It's still sitting in a box. No, we used it. We did? I had to break it down yeah, to yeah, send it back, it. and you just yeah. never sent it back. Yeah, he used it. I used it a couple of times. Oh. I liked it a lot. I just I didn't love the grip, um, and it was a little heavier. It wasn't, I don't think it was carbon fiber. Yeah. There's pros and cons to all of them. Yeah. There's a reason that the, the, that, the, that the Red Rock stuff is expensive, and everybody uses it. Yep. It's not, it's not a fluke. It's because they're well-made, and they're comfortable, and they're, they do the job. So exactly. anytime you see a black thing with blue, blue is their color. Yep. Melamed underscore photography. What would you say to a 15-year-old photographer? <laughs> that's it? <laughs> some t- some I'm, not tip- al- I'm not allowed to say anything to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Some tips to go and get some jobs? Question mark. Love you, Fro and the crew. I'll say the same thing that I always say to anybody getting started is uh, you are not just a photographer today. If you think you're just going to be a photographer you're probably going to be left behind. Now, of course, there are always exceptions to the rule. You need to set yourself out, uh, set yourself up to be not just a photographer, but to be a creative. A creative can use any means available to them, whether it's 
photography, whether it's audio, whether it's video, whether it's editing, whether it's graphic design, whether it's art, mark, marketing and advertising, you need to be well-rounded. So don't call yourself just a photographer in this day and age. When I started and I was 13, I think it was a, it was a totally different time. I was a photographer at that time for a long period of time. Now I'm just a freaking creative and all around can do quite a bit. And that's what I think everybody needs to be. Not everybody. That's what I think a good idea. That's what I would tell a 15-year-old photographer is that you should not just call yourself a photographer. You should be a creative. And if you want to come out and be a photographer at the end of all that, and that's your main focus, awesome. But also make sure you know how to do everything else. Mariano Lopez, one, two, one, eight. Mario Lopez? Mariano Lopez. Jared, what would it take for you to cut your fro off? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not, not going to cut it off. No, I'm not going to cut it off. What would I, can't I do? can't wait till it turns gray. What would I be if I'm not for the fro? <laughs> Bald nose photo. No. <laughs> James.young.photos. Harry, everyone. Harry, everyone? Hey, everyone. <laughs> What's each of your, excluding Noah and Joe, favorite ice creams? Mint chocolate chip all day. Todd? Uh, I used to like that Stephen Colbert... All American crunch from like Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> I like I like I like ice cream with lots of crap in it. Yeah, I I I've always been partial to mint chocolate chip. Also, yeah, with a lot of oh, mint. Oh, you got in there, but I think I would like something that had. Don't touch me with those unwashed. <laughs> hey, I got like an hour shower today. I'm good to go. <laughs> well, there was another question that somebody asked that I didn't pick about your shower. <laughs> What'd they ask? He goes, Stephen, <laughs> what's what my you, shower routine? What are you doing yes. in the shower while you listen to half a playlist? <sighs> Showering. Yeah, what are you doing? I have OCD, man. I'm scrubbing every little crevice. I gotta do it really? all. Really? Really? I mean, seriously? Seriously. Like, I literally go nuts in the shower. It's bad. I'm, I'm too Do you detail know how much skin is left on the it. floor? Is, is, is it freeing to be at Firefly knowing you just can't take one? Or are you OCD with your towelettes? No, no, no. I don't. Once I'm dirty, I don't mind it. But once I get in the shower, I have to like do a full-on shower. That sounds really And hot. I scrub the crap out of my face, too. And yeah. I, I don't take that long of a shower. It's like a 15-minute shower. Whoa. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, <laughs> no, yes, no, yes. No, 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 no. Yes. Todd, can we get verification? Uh, I, mean, I will tell you. Jared, Jared will tell you it's an hour. Yeah. I mean, It's it, like 15 it, minutes. You know, it's not crazy. It, That's it, long. 15 minutes is a long time to be wa running water. You have like a two-minute shower. It I feel depends. like you don't shower enough. Um, I, I shower plenty. And he I just, just puts in half his body. He doesn't take his, <laughs> he doesn't take his jeans off. <laughs> or his tight shirt. It doesn't even come off anymore. Just yeah. glued the, to the his body. The shirt does come off, but sometimes I just, I don't, if I'm not doing my hair, yeah. it's about a minute and a half shower is all that's needed. Because I'm not doing it, so my hair doesn't get under the water. I have my Lufla, Lufla? And, and my and my uh, Dove Body Men Lotion with what? extra men. <laughs> 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 I was uh, just filling in what Todd would say. Yep. Anyway, what, what was this guy's question? Uh, favorite ice what creams. Were you, what oh, were you yeah, filling cream, in with yeah. the shampoo bottle? I like some ice cream that probably has brownies in it. Oh, yeah. But I don't really what eat. What about Girl Scouts? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, they're too young, Todd. <gasps> Uh, Depends uh, what badges they have. Exactly. You mean Boy Scouts? Nathan Smith. Nathan Smith. Four four four. Hey Fro, I've thought about vlogging on YouTube, but I'm sort of a jack of all and a master of none. How well do you think a random topic YouTube channel could do? One week it's cooking, and the next might be a photo topic or Mr. Fix It show. Is it mostly the tags that can get your topic of the week seen? Even the. Uh, I even thought any audience suggestion could drive the next show topic. Well, I think you're overcomplicating this totally. Is just make something. Yeah, and but that I, is kind of random. That well, I have. Of course it's random, but you're going to see what works. You're going to try. You have to try. You just have to start. Come up with your ideas and guess what's going to happen. You're going to get three months in. Oh, and by the way, it's going to take more than a month or a week to get traction if you ever do get traction. So the point here is that you just try stuff. You set out with an idea to do something and you see what works because maybe your Mr. Fix-It videos do better than your cooking videos and you go, oh, snap, maybe I should go this direction. So your, your, your followers are going to tell you where to go. Not that you may have any when you start, but yeah, you need to do smart tags and you like need to, to get out. I like when your followers tell you where to go. What? What? That's my answer. Anybody have anything else to say? I, about I feel that? like um, he wouldn't get that many subscribers because it's so random each video that he puts out. But 
as far as search results go, that'll be pretty big if he has specific titles and tags and all of that stuff. It could well, be. He, he could be maybe random at first, and if whatever sticks, then just follow yeah, that. Yeah, that's you, what I just said. That. Yeah. yeah. That's what I just said, Todd Wolf. That's not what you said. Chucky Bando <laughs> from Florida. We know Chucky. Awesome Instagram channel with a lot of food on it. Jared, my job is sending me to Spain for six weeks to train at a two-star Michelin restaurant. Oh. Not one star, but two. Ooh. I'm having trouble deciding if I should rent the Canon 11 to 24 for my trip. I rented that lens for France, and it's amazing. Love it. But I would need to rent it for 50-something days, Oof. which is over $700. Thoughts, suggestions. <laughs> Renting it for that long is almost a third of the price of buying a new one. My question is, didn't lens rentals do something where if you buy it after renting it they will deduct the they price do. they do well then that would be my answer yeah and i think oh. alan has done that in the past alan used to do that when i worked there it was if you rented it for a couple of days and it was a hundred dollars for the rental but you turned around and you wanted to buy that same camera they would deduct the rental fee from it and you don't and basically include that in the cost of what you uh in the purchase that's a good idea and what lens rentals does uh about every year i would say they clear out their inventory and sell all their lenses almost half off huh. i actually bought a couple of my lenses used from lens rentals but I would suggest just buying it used in the first place anyway. Well, that lens you're not finding used. Yeah, I mean, it's, what, every year now? And still hard to get in yeah, stock. Yeah, yeah. It's a $3,000 three? lens. Yeah. Look, I would rent it from, from Lens Rentals. Uh, call them, make sure you could do that first, and say, hey, if I decide to purchase this, can you deduct the $700? And see how it is, because... You you know was it a used lens? Is it a new lens? See how it works. Call them and see what happens. I think they give you the used price that you would have to end up paying in the end. I don't well, think that they would give be you, awesome. Yeah, I don't think they would charge well, you the full price. If it's if you've spent seven hundred dollars to rent it and it's say twenty five hundred dollars yeah. already, damn. And if you know you love this lens, Chucky, I would I would go I would do that. I do love that lens. It's great. Comment viral and Solanaki <laughs> photography. There you go. Comment viral Solank. E photography. That just runs off the tip of the tongue. Great choice. <laughs> That's what they picked. <laughs> hey, Jared, what do you do with all the prints you are making for various real world reviews, etc.? Ever thought about having a gallery showing slash exhibition of your best works? The answer is uh, they sit in a pile over there right now. <laughs> they just sit on the floor. <laughs> but you, that's, you took them to the... the, the no, the I end. used Adorama, uh, Adorama Pix prints for that. Oh. Because I still had hundreds of those left over from the, the, the comparisons with the printers. Oh, gotcha. So I used those. Gotcha. It's a shame. We have so many great prints that are just kind of laying around. So part of the idea with the Fro Factory is that we have easy walls that are magnetized or metal that's magnetized that can move that allows us to hang and quickly move stuff around cool so we can always have different photos showing different sizes in different areas and rotating thinking, gallery i like that. thinking about when we do open the fro factory part of the party is a gallery show whether i do printouts from hopefully the new canon printer that's the 44 inch one big guy. or i get big metal prints from adorama picks uh hopefully 40 by 60 showcase this stuff and then have um todd spinning Todd's going to do DJing. Yay, yay. And then, Ferno, and then I'm going to have Ferno come in, probably, if he's around, if that's oh, yeah. all right. I don't give a damn. But they can each have a set, and they can both spin. Todd's stuff is fun. I've listened to it. I think it's a great idea. Now that Noah's doing a fantastic job over at the, the shipping department, for those who don't know, the shipping department has moved over to the Fro <laughs> Factory. It's actually only in the... The only thing that's completed there is the... The apartment side of it, and that's what Noah's working in. Um, working and living there. <laughs> no, not living there. He could though. He's I mean, curled up. He's curled up in the shirts like your cat. <laughs> if it gets no to, no, Noah, we're not what allergic are you doing? to Noah. What? Huh? Where are your glasses? Uh, <laughs> what? Did we get? A, did we get a new? Did we get a new order? <laughs> <laughs> Hope somebody memes that. Noah, Noah, Tug. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> anyway, this is why you need to watch the podcast and not listen. Um, I think we're gonna start selling limited edition prints. I've never done that before, so now that Noah can can operate that, we will print, sign, number, and put them up in the store. I think so, that'd be awesome. So yeah. that people yeah. can go ahead and purchase those. Do you need to get those tube cylinders that you I ship out? I think we'll out? ship them flat. Really? Even you think bigger that's... stuff. Flat is how all the people ship. Do you think Is that more expensive to ship that way than the tube? Probably. Is that best better? Best of the best. Spare no expense. 
Um, I only want my stuff shipped flat personally. It is always a pain to reflatten something. That's why that's when been I get cylinders. 24 by 36 metal, well, metal you can't roll, but even when Adorama picks, I think they put it in a tube. I, when I get large prints, I specifically say, please ship it flat. They've always shipped it flat for me when I've ordered anything above, I think anything from them. Huh. Yeah. So maybe they do ship them flat. Flat is it because you don't want to roll them up. Mm-hmm. That's just a pain in the ass. <sighs> Andre Scott Photography. Any plans on making Raw Talk either longer or more often than once a week once longer. the Fro Factory is up and running? Don't say that. Longer. No. Shorter. <laughs> We can do it a couple times a week if you want to. I mean, I, I, I could just edit it real quick. I mean, I, I'm really, really excited. I mean, I'll just be out in the garden if you need me. So just just let me know. All right, I'll go find you. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's funny when I make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, um, no, I don't think we have plans on doing that, but I think we have plans on evolving different options, different things. The Fro Factory hopefully opens up a whole bunch of different uh, things for us to do. Todd and I have been talking about it, and there's a lot. And it's always half and half. I think most uh, half of them will say they want it longer. Half of them will say they want it shorter. It's except it's all if over you the place. ask most women. <laughs> yes. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we ask our women readers? What do you prefer, shorter or longer <laughs> raw talks, or girthier? I guess mm. it depends on who you ask. Uh. <laughs> Commentarthurly going. I'm glad you oh, asked no, for no, their no, real no. names this time. Yeah, I did. I did. Let me see. Does he put his real name in here? No. It's Comment Arthur Lue. <laughs> going to be shooting a golf tourney event for $100 gift card and hopefully to land prospective clients. I have this idea to charge golfers as they come by. $5 for an action shot digital download. Is that a good idea? How do I keep this organized? Is there anything else you would suggest that I do to make this event worthwhile? Yet, yeah, if you want to bother a golfer as they're walking by and say, hey, it's going to be $5. Take this out of your pocket <laughs> that you don't have any of the money with. Yeah, wait. Excuse me. Hold on. Don't swing that. I want to get an action shot and charge you $5. I would not, char- I would n- I would not do that. He's lining if up he's wearing the pretentious shot. colorful pants, though, then you should. What yeah. I would do, got though, a lot of money he's lining up for the shot. What I <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> There's a gay clown running out on the on, on the field right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Would you like a Would you like a picture of yourself? What's your name? <laughs> My name's Jared. If you don't know what we're talking about, watch the D500 <laughs> Real World Review. Gay clown. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm a happy clown doesn't mean anything, Todd. Mm, I know exactly a happy clown. Um. I would not try to charge them $5 as they walk on by. What I would do is let them know, hey, I'm going to be putting up all these photographs for you to download and make sure that you make sure there's a major plug in there for the work that you do. Say it's sponsored by you, meaning it sounds like you you paid for the ability to do this. You're not just saying, I'm giving it away for free. You're like, no, I'm sponsoring this. It costs, You don't have to tell them what it costs you, but that's just something that you say that you sponsored it and I'm giving you these images for free because generally golfers... Or what if they order prints from you? You could off then you could put the site up there, but you said he said digital download. Right. So you could put he the did, digital yeah. downloads and say that's complimentary. If you would like to buy photographs, here's a link to buy photographs. That's something that you can do. Also, you want to utilize this as an opportunity to to promote to these people because generally speaking, golfers tend to have money. That um that reminds me at Morgan's last recital of the year. In the program it said no videography, no photography. Because they're trying to sell it to you. And if you go to this website, this this photographer's website, and you can buy the pictures there. Nope. And so I you was th- like, do you think he doesn't get paid for that event? He's he said just he's getting a hundred dollar gift. No, 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 I'm not saying know. that. I'm saying the guy oh, at. See, no, I, I don't. They know. don't. So it's just strictly a right, commission. I used to off. do this. Yeah. I used to do this. I used to shoot hockey tournaments, and you would give maybe ten percent back to the the rink for and you would keep allowing you to be yeah. there, and then you keep everything else. I don't agree with the no photography and no video. It's your freaking kid yeah you That's can't say was. no and you're already paying and what for they that say to you anyway. when you shot oh i'm already paying for everything yeah. there yeah. so I, I didn't shoot there i mean it is kind of nice to just watch it but i'm like you should have the right not, to photograph your own daughter well, at her I, own i'm saying event. like he's gonna probably take mostly wide shots or medium shots of the whole group not he's not taking up. dedicated shots of my kid well true, or that let me kid. tell you how i used to do it 
and how I would do it in this situation is you make it a point to get a dedicated tight shot of each kid as well yeah. as a wide for yeah. the team. Yeah. When I did hockey, I would make sure to get a tight shot of every single kid, especially the goalies. That's goalies smart. spend a ton of money just because the goalies, they're goalies. They're always weird, and they spend a lot of money. <laughs> well, goalies are weird. Were you a goalie? Are they? No. Oh, yeah. Goalies are weird. That's are you funny. a goalie? But so I always made a point oh. to get pictures of the goalies. So stop being weird, Noah. Goalie? Stop being weird, goalie. <laughs> But if if I was um, if I was we shooting, we need a dedicated camera for Noah's reaction. You, you could really just think. put you could just put it in the hot shoe of this camera. Should, yeah, we could put another GoPro uh, in the hot shoe as he sits there. Noah wants to be back in the desk now. He's like, I don't want to. No, come he wants out to be back anymore. at the shipping department in the hot hot shipping department until the air conditioning oh, gets turned on over yeah. there. So that that's what I would if if I saw like look if I have kids and I'm out there and the event says you can't take pictures I'm going to be like this. I mean, I like the fact of being able to enjoy it in the moment, but then I'm also like, I could probably get, maybe get better pictures of just Morgan, <laughs> dedicated pictures of Morgan, because that's all I'm taking. So like, let me say this. When I went to Israel for the Ma- Maccabea Games, the Jewish Olympics, I always preface that, and I was the photographer, they were trying to sell the pictures online to, back to the athletes. And I'm like, this is stupid. I'm like, why don't you have a sponsor and give it away for nothing? Give it, let the sponsor pay for the cost of making the digital images for hiring the photographers to do that and then give it away. It's added freaking value that makes you seem like you're giving back instead of always trying to take and take and take from everybody. I'm like, if you added an extra $10 to the thousand or the the thousand athletes that they're sending, that's a hell of a lot of money that you've added, but you built it into the cost. And I noticed this when we're going to Germany, we're looking for places to stay in Berlin, or I am, I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. And it's like free Wi Fi. It's like include that. It's just like when you go to Vegas and they don't have free Wi Fi, they have convenience a complimentary charge. convenience. It's a convenience fee. Love it. Convenience fee, my ass. It's an inconvenience fee of over $15, 20 or $30 extra a freaking night for clean towels and this bullshit and this bullshit instead of just having well you we know, had to charge you that fee because there were so many towels in, in <laughs> Steven's room <laughs> that's true he used so much soap <laughs> well that's <laughs> Noah shut up <laughs> he loves it when we make fun of everybody else he's like <laughs> alright original 19 I get oh. side eye when I make fun of him he's like original 197 question for Jared I know you like black and white pictures. What is that? What is that you like in black and white? What difference is it compared to the color image? Image in your opinion? I'll just say how I figure out what goes black and white. If it feels right in black and white, it's what I go for. It's just a feel. There's no rhyme or reason to say why this image is better in black and white versus color. If the color is not even existent, then black and white, of course, yeah. makes more sense. Yep. But on some occasions, like the picture of the girl at the the javelin, it looks pretty good well it looks awesome in black and white and it looks really really good in color i just chose the black and white in that case it's a it's a personal choice how about you um i would say i'm more of a color guy i think personally i usually go full color all the time unless it's shitty light if it's shitty light at a concert that i'm shooting on black and white all day Uh, street photography i tend to do black and white um like you said it's more of a feel but do you actually go and each individual picture change it to black and white yeah or you see it and you're like, eh, it looks better in black and white. Let me try. Oh, no, no, no. It, or you I, no matter what, try it in black and no, white. No, no, not every picture. Certain pictures I know just feel right when I okay. look at them. Before but, you even turn but, it to black and white. But yeah, but then I'm like, what would this look like in black and white? And I do that. I pump my contrast and I go, yeah, that doesn't work. I also think Nikons do a lot better looking. They look a lot better in black and white. Hmm. More punchy, more contrasty. I naturally. agree with you about the concert lighting, though. Yeah, because there was wacky, Any poor light. there was super wacky lighting on stage at Morgan's recital, or that unbalanced I, that light. That I especially. did take pictures of, and the color was crazy. Like when they have tungsten and daylight all well, mixed. Well, it was and reds terrible. and blues yeah. and weird stuff going on stage, and I was like, black and white, reds or oranges, yep. the worst. I am Logan Hawk, Logan Hawk. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Question for y'all. I added the y'all. <laughs> this is a uh, f Mary kill. Oh, we haven't had one of these in a while. Kill Noah. So it's kill number one. <laughs> oh. It says kill one, F1, marry one, marry allegedly. Taco Bell Becky, Bindi Irwin, Ooh. or Naruto? Random. 
man, I think this is pretty easy. Oh, no, it's not. I just thought, what the hell do you do with Becky? Wait, there's only three. Taco Bell, Becky, Bindi, Irwin, and Naruto. You have to kill one, F1, one, well, and I marry Well, one. I would kill Naruto. I think I would marry Naruto. Because he's going to have all that money from that case coming in. No, he, he, he keeps losing. He's going to be balling yeah. though. I'd probably... I would I, kill I, Becky. I'd, probably. I think she's a dirty whore. I think, she, <laughs> I think she'd probably be a lot of fun. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Hey, you know what, Steven? Um, I'll kill you if you come near me anyways. My looks and my kisses will just melt your heart, you sweaty bastard. Because I saw you at Firefly, you fuck. <laughs> And if I lit a match near you, your your fly would have been on fire from all the kerosene was leaking out of your pores. So go fuck yourself, sweaty bag. Fuck off, Taco Bell Becky. Goodbye, sweaty. All right, I'm killing Naruto. I'm gonna go have some fun with uh, Taco Bell Becky. <laughs> what? No. I mean, I did say I would kill you. Yes. I know. I thought they were going to say Noah first and not you, but I had to pick somebody. Yes, but please, yeah, but see, when you start banging monkeys, you get all kinds of weird things happening, diseases and stuff. Goodbye. Uh, what? Okay, let's 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 change this up, because I think Bindi Irwin's too okay. <sighs> We've got Taco Bell Becky, Naruto. Meredith's daughter, and Naruto. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you marry Meredith's daughter or do you marry Taco Bell Becky? I don't think I'd want to marry Meredith's daughter. <laughs> oh my god, I'm marrying his daughter. I'm going to be the Jew that marries his daughter. <laughs> god damn it, you Jew! Don't you ever come near my sweet, sweet nubbins with your 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 wide nose and your curly Jew curls. I swear on my Lord and Savior Donald J. Trump. D- Donald Jesus Trump is what I've named him now. That I will Yes, This please. wasn't Ask Us every, Anything, so it definitely fits. Big F1981. <laughs> For everyone, Joe and Noah included, and nope. maybe d- 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 Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Did they put that? D- 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 Dan. Thank you for that. Show to the Thank camera. you for that. <laughs> d- 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 <laughs> with, with y'all having such good on show comedy relationship... <sighs> Do you ever get annoying comments by people who try and copy join in with it, i.e. telling Noah to shut up, telling Steven he can't focus, or day. shouting about Jared's giant ego? Frank the, Matthews... The only person that tries to copy and imitate the funny stuff is Jared. <laughs> <laughs> what, time? It's always the look after you say stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, there's a lot of people that post memes and tweets and, and, and say stuff. I think some people take it too far when they were leaving comments for Noah. It was the comment for Noah. You had to say, stop being weird, Noah. No, what did it end up saying? Stop being a dick. What did the comment say for the free lens cloth? I mean, I wrote a lot. Yeah, then Noah's like, go F yourself, Noah. Give me free stuff. Yeah, like it, there's, it, it can be funny. Yeah, but we not, get it's maybe yeah. a joke, but that's really disrespectful. And, and at the same time, it's very hard to uh, to Type read it. text. Yeah. Comedy Sar- sarcasm is doesn't lost come in, through in text yeah. very well. Yeah. yeah. It's like every single picture I post, I get, oh, it's not in focus. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? That's Todd's fault. Yeah. Uh, well, I, right, mean, I, I mean, I type that. Let's so. keep going on. It's great to be known as the out of focus photographer. Danny Fernandez. Todd, would you? Well, it's not like you have a t shirt. Yeah, where's my royalty check, by the way? <laughs> 25 cents. Danny Fernandez. Todd, would you ever consider doing your own podcast? You're awesome, buddy, and you totally. You're awesome, buddy. Okay, didn't use a comma, and oh, because there doesn't need to be one. And you totally brought up the level of entertainment to Raw Talk. Danny from Toronto, Canada, eh? Danny. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I thought about it, but, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. There's only so much work. He's uh, in, He just wants to sit and I set play video up, games. Uh, well, here, I'll tell you this. I set shower. something up and did a test of something Yeah. at my place with Dan. Hey, guys. And um, he came over shit-faced. And it's the most was horrible he riding his thing. bike? No, no, he came over after a, um, after a, like a festival of some sort, and I was like, "Hey, just come over. We'll we'll talk about 
pop culture, and we'll see what it looks like. I want to test this out. He was destroyed. Who is this, Dan? Dan. Dan. Oh. Dan. It, it's, it's probably a beer fest or something. He's always it at was, something. It was. It was. And I have, I have episode zero that is just absolutely is atrocious. Is it good oh, or bad? That's great. It's funny because you can see him being like messed up, and then you can see me giving him like no eyes. Like it's 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 bad because he goes off when he's drunk. But it's you, funny. You filmed it. You didn't oh, just. Yes. Wow. It's totally filmed. We should show some of that. No. All right. <laughs> Here we go. T underscore Moselle underscore G. Hey Jared, when and why did you adopt your no crop philosophy? This goes way back to junior high. Sorry, to high school when I realized as you raise the enlarger the grain and everything shows up more it becomes more prevalent and my teacher's like well crop in the camera not in the dark room aka get as close as you can to fill the frame because that is how you get the best results from your negatives you're not enlarging the grain just like when you make a contact strip it looks amazing you don't want to go ahead and raise the enlarger so much to compensate for the cropping and i've just carried that all on along all along with digital the other part of it now is that I don't want to second guess every picture that I take, which is what I think happens when you start to freely crop things. You're like, oh, well, it's okay. I'll do that. That's my own personal preference. Mr. Dot Royal Ro- Rolando here, <laughs> a.k.a. Mr. Raleigh. How many followers should I have before I start pursuing sponsors as an influencer? Well, what the hell makes you an influencer in the first place is the question you have to ask. If you have, if you're an influ- I mean, if you do something that a sponsor would de- would see value in, then that's when you reach out. But there's this idea that if you've got like three followers, that you're gonna deliver some value to the sponsors. It's not just about making money. It, you have to be able to deliver value to whoever it is that's giving you the money, and you have to ask yourself, do you want to be beholden to these people to do what they ask you to do? It's a fine line between having full control about what you do and having partial control because you have to... It's kind of like being in the United States Senate and having an unforeseen company or organization give you a lot of money and that entices your vote. Or, on the flip side of the coin, a large bank giving you a lot of money to come speak at their event for $250,000 and you saying that doesn't influence your decision on Wall Street there i uh, kept it politically correct on both sides of the coin i'll take the money i'll do anything <laughs> any, anything. um <laughs> ryan keo photo <laughs> hey fro steven todd and you other guys just finished the video editing guide it was packed with information you guys did an amazing job with it and thanks for the asset to thanks for the assets to practice with Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> son of a bitch! Thank you, editing guy. Butterfly. Thank you for the purchase. You guys did something, a uh, good job with that. Thanks for the assets to practice with. Do, uh, Todd, when you are finished with a project and have delivered the final cut to a client, do you keep the project intact in your editing program indefinitely, just in case, or do you eventually clear things out to save hard drive space, keep organized, etc.? I generally keep everything. Mm-hmm. I generally keep everything, and you know what? A lot of times, if I know it's going to be a pretty large project, I would act, I would I'd usually put like a, a an additional cost in for long ter- long term storage. Oh, that's so good I, idea. I might buy an extra hard drive just for their project, and then that would go up on a shelf. I might buy two of them to double, you know, save them, yeah. du- you know, double Redundant. it up. Um, but I'd pass that along to the client. And they can decide if they don't want it doubled up or not. But and yeah. usually export a full master copy and keep all the and then project yeah files uh, yeah as well. obviously I'll, I'll keep a full res master there and maybe on the cloud I've got a, a cloud backup for all my masters and stuff like that. But yeah, project files I I you never know when you need those raw assets and that raw uh, that raw project file. Yeah, we keep everything. That's the point. Yep. Yeah. Brian L Crawford. <laughs> hey, Fro, Stephen, Todd, Noah, and Joe. In parentheses, don't shut up, Joe. You don't have to listen to them. <laughs> He's not even what here. What do you think about that, Joe? <laughs> Crickets. Joe. Oh, Joe's not here today? So I don't have a photo or video question, but for Todd, what video games have you been into lately, and did you follow E3 at all? Of course I followed E3. Um, last thing I played was Uncharted, the most, and I played The Division, and I think that's about it right now. I haven't really been playing that much. I've been actually trying to work. Sky F this. For once. <laughs> Is for Jared. 
Desperate for help with shooting drummers. One episode you said the drummer was the hardest to shoot and I struggle with that a lot. My 10-year-old daughter is in a band and they play some shows on very dark stage. I shoot all the kids in the band and enjoy sharing with the parents, but the photos of the drummer are so hard to get because the lights are all different colors and barely any of that light ends uh, gets on gets on him. Gets on, on, the, on drummer, the drummer, I think they mean. On the drummer. Yeah, but he said 10-year-old daughter. Well, she oh, might well, be in maybe the band. her, yeah. Yeah, maybe she's not the drummer. Oh. Shooting with a Nikon D70, whoa, 28 to 140. Whoa. Never heard of that. Willing to rent another lens if suggestion, thanks. Well, whoa. first things first, that that lens, that camera's not going to do above 800 ISO or 1600 ISO anyway. But here's the thing, if there's if this is a kids concert, I would get there extra early and move Adjust the, the lights. damn lights yeah. to get onto the drummer or talk to a lighting person. Or, or move the, 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 the whole riser? group up. The rack up, yeah. yeah well, you, you, it might be easier to move the, the, kid the, the, the kids up into the light than it is to get up and mess with the That could be one thing. Or just talk to the lighting people and try to make that happen. Just do whatever you need to do. And if you need to get extra lights, you do it. Especially Even if that. you need to get behind her and do a silhouette type shot or something like that, Ooh, that could always work too. That's fancy. Just mix it up. I like that. Farts underscore P photography. <laughs> Farts. He's the guy that always uh, comments between Twitter, I think, sends oh, memes and stuff. Hi, yeah. Jared. This question is for you. How did your custom 64 audio ears turn out? Oh, I think you already answered that. Well, they fit in my ears, and I haven't really listened. Actually, they did sound like they had a hell of a lot more things I could hear. Like, different separation of different... Uh, it has more drivers, right? Yeah, it, they're U12s. I don't know if that means 12 drivers in total or 12 in each ear for, or just more pronounced or each, or is it six each instrument? Ear. I don't know. Yeah, it just sounded mix. like I heard things in different cool. places than with the ultimate ears, but I still have to listen and, and try it out. So that is the ask us anything type thing. Noah, I need the wheel here. Can you pay attention, please? He's no Joe. He's definitely no Joe. That's what I'm saying. Get <laughs> off my space. So, <laughs> so my now space. it's time to get to the wheel of fro. Careful. Don't make daddy yell. Careful. <laughs> and here is the wheel of fro, so let's go around it so that we can pick somebody from the questions this week to spin. Let's do it. Uh, on the wheel, we've got squarespace.com slash fro. Go there to get your 14-day free trial, but also go to phronosphoto.com slash branding to get the free branding guide that is two and a half hours of awesome stuff that Dan did edit. We got video blocks. Uh, like a Videoblocks.com slash go slash fro. That's where we get a lot of the B-roll footage. That's where you can get a lot of B-roll footage. Go check it out. We've got the fro bag that you can get at store.fronosphoto.com. If you do order something at store.fronosphoto.com, leave Noah a note, please. A nice one. We've got Rode microphones. These are the Rode broadcasters that we use. We also have the Video Mic Me and the Video Mic Micro. We also have all those different things. Kessler Crane. Go to KesslerCrane.com. Use the code FRO10, correct? FRO10, yes. To get some discounts on some stuff. Again, we can't wait to use the damn cranes when we get over to the Pro can't Factory. Wait. We've got Spin Again and the Epson printers in the middle. We got Adoramapix.com. We've got the Fronos Photo Guide to Video Editing. You can get that over at Fronosphoto.com slash video hyphen editing hyphen guide. Think Tank Photo makes awesome bags. Audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. We use Audioblocks. You can hear it right now. All the time. We use it to do the Audioblocks. Uh, the entire 1DX Mark II review. All of that. Yep. Then we've got Fro shirts. Go to store.fronosphoto.com. And if you purchase one of those shirts right now and leave a comment that says, Stop being weird, Noah, he will include a free lens cloth, a $5 value. Well worth it. We've got Rode microphones. That is the video mic me. That's the one that I use uh, on Facebook Live. And when I'm out and about making videos, anything with my phone, I want to use a better microphone. I use that bad boy. Lexar, that is the Lexar Hub, the HR1 or the HR2, the one that uses Thunderbolt. HR2. Which, the HR2 is Thunderbolt. I love that damn thing, but we use the Lexar XQD, Micro SD, SD, Compact Flash, CFast. and X, XQD and CFast. Everything. Pro Prize, yeah. Hoya. Hoya. All the video guides and back to the top. Let's spin it, and we're going to have a name pop up on the screen. Yes. Voiceover time. Nice. Voiceover time. That's my favorite part of the show. Uh, God damn it. Please be the bag. 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 Around and around it goes where it stops. Nobody knows the wheel of froze about to stop on an amazing prize. Amazing prize. Bag, 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 bag. Oh. Almost Epson. Well, almost spin again. Or spin again, too. Adorama picks. 
What are you doing? He's trying we'll to go make to spin it move. <laughs> As all the cameras are shaking uh. like crazy. <laughs> so congratulations goes to... Farts underscore P Photography. You just won some stuff from Adorama Picks. AdoramaPicks.com. Go check them out because I use Adorama Picks to make metal bridge. Add photo too. books. Great photo voiceover, books. Noah. Right. What? <laughs> Great voiceover, Steven. You're welcome. And now it's time for the memes, right? It is. All right, let's do the memes and wrap up the show. Let's do it. What is the first one, Todd? Well, the first one is called Blows, and this is from Omar Negrin. Okay. It is open on my screen. It blows pretty hard. <laughs> so do you. Steven reaction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next one. Who's this it from? This one's from Pascal Paulus, oh. called The Fellowship <laughs> of the Focus. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> All right, let's. Jared let's make actually this looks like that guy. That's gonna be Jared when he's ninety. Yep. That's his. Wait, afro. I thought I was Frodo. No, you're you're Gandalf. Oh, am I uh, Sam or am I? You're Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. Oh, and this is I a am an eagle. Apparently, <laughs> you're. You got a beak too. <laughs> nice beak. I already had that. You need to add that. That's pretty good. What's the next one? Curious case of Jared Poland <laughs> from Broxy Bear, our buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the winner of three douchebag awards. <laughs> Including best of the Do You Know Who I Am? Where'd they get a photo of you? Like it was, oh, it from was your, me with my freaking your goddaughter. Niece. But look at how he's holding the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see the camera. A podcast that must be experienced. A monumental achievement. Oh, from Adder, Adam Lerner, Brooklyn Photo Works. That's his quote. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Bravo. Oh, that All right, what's funny. the next one? Uh, the next one's from Johannes Eckerson, Erickson. Just called Todd Slaps Noah. <laughs> After <What>? Raw Talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Is this like the Batman slap? <laughs> yep. All right. Is there and one more? Last one is video, so make sure you got your sound off. And it's called Please Buy This Guide from Chris Starkey. <laughs> <laughs> that is my passport photo. I wonder if he got that. <laughs> I feel like he got that money from Video Box. I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Get a new portion. I can feed Morgan, please. That's true. Nice photo, Todd. You look like you're stoned out of your mind. Hey, guys. I was trying to talk to me, like, hey, is it going to be? I was like, hey, is it going to? Oh, okay. All right. I guess that happened. All right. Ready on three. She's like, oh, it looks great. It looks really good. And those those are the five. What are What are we picking as the winner? Oh, I think that fellowship one's pretty solid. Yeah. And I I do like the movie poster one. Me holding Jared. See, Broxy keep, uh, keeps playing the system because he keeps sending in good oh, ones. Oh, Broxy Bear did win multiple he, times. He, he did the the the, um, the Grand Theft Auto one. He's good, though. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. What tell them where, they, what tell them where they send them into. It's singwheelofro at gmail.com. And make sure you include your name in the, yes. title, the file yes. name. Yes, that's I, 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 I guess the poster. I like the poster. Uh, I like the, um, <laughs> the one with the Adam Lerner thing on it. The poster. Uh, the movie yeah, poster. The, that's Broxy the, Bear. The curious though. case, yeah. So if you already won, then pick somebody else. <laughs> Uh, let's what do you pick, think, Todd? Fellowship of the Focus. That yeah, good one. I think that's I like pretty that. good too. I like that. All but right. Shout out to Broxy because he does he, he does awesome. Yeah, work. he does. Keep him coming. All right, so that's the memes for this week. So um, congrats to Pascal Paulus for winning that little competition. Pascal Paulus. He will get a guide, I believe, right? Yeah, something. Yeah. Noah will be in touch or something like that. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> weird will be in touch. Something will happen. <laughs> something will happen. Hopefully. All right, so those are the memes. Uh, next week's show. Is going to be slightly different yes. because Todd's traveling, I'm traveling, but we didn't want to go a week, you know, we didn't want to miss a week. Two weeks so we're going to have a special day. show that's going to be a little different where we're answering different type of questions that we generally shy away from, but it should be pretty cool. But let's get some, ha- what kind of hashtags do we have this week? Have we thought of anything? Oh, that's a good question. Stop being weird, Noah. <laughs> that's always an easy go-to. Hashtag uh, stop being weird, hashtag Noah. Hashtag one. <laughs> hashtag well <laughs> one but uh hashtag I don't know, steven didn't shower for five days oh yeah firefly crotch <laughs> <laughs> bat wings do you run into anybody making out out there uh oh yeah was there any public nudity going on oh yeah really Is there public yeah. banging going on i didn't see any public banging no it, it, if they needed any lubricant would you help them out with your <laughs> <laughs> all right on that note uh, oh, by the way, before we go, I need to borrow that Sony camera. I want to. T- I want to test that oh, out vacation, on vacation. Right? The yeah. RX100 Mark IV. Yeah, yeah. We you did a real that. world review on that. Actually, I, I know, think that's, that's a good option for you to take. I want something I can just throw in my pocket, 
in my, in my, in my cargo shorts with no in extra your dad shorts. nonsense. Yeah. That that should work. Just don't drop and break. I mean, if you do, whatever. Yeah. At this point, we'll whatever. <laughs> Money's always better. Sign, sign, sign the contract that says if you break it, you will pay for it. Uh, I mean, all right, I'll just sign it. All right, so this has been episode 187. You get all the photo news stories and more over fronosphoto.com slash rawtalk-187. You can oh, also oh, no. look out on the internet or on the iTunes area to download the video podcast. You can download that to your phone. You can also get the audio from regular place and you can watch the video on YouTube we know that you like watching so you keep it classy San Diego <laughs> that's gonna be the end of the show Jared Poland Fronos photo.com see ya <laughs>